Today, we're talking about who is it for? Who can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? And let's go back to Acts 2. And these are the words of Peter. He said, repent. And this is after the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts 2, 4. In Acts 2, 38, he's explaining to the people around what was happening. And he said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So we know that is what you do to be saved. That's what you do to become a Christian. Then after that, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit, this gift is called the promise several times, including here. The promise of the Holy Spirit is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God will call. This simply means that the Holy Spirit, this gift, is available to any child of God. You have to be born again. You have to be a Christian. But once you become a Christian, you can then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you can receive that gift. Now, you, you can't receive it before you're saved. It is not salvation itself. That is a work of the Spirit. When someone becomes a Christian, they're born again, and the Spirit of God dwells in them. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body. We know all of that is true for every believer. But the gift of the Holy Spirit in this sense is for those who, who are saved and want more. It is an, an addition. It is like going from a well of water to a river of water. You do not have to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues to go to heaven. We're not saying that. And if you're a Christian, you know you're saved. And if you haven't received this gift and haven't spoken in other tongues, I don't have to tell you, you're going to heaven. You're a Christian. You're a believer. This is something in addition to salvation. And I believe every child of God should experience this gift. It is just so powerful and it's so wonderful. It's more of the things you really love and, and enjoy about God. It's more of God's power, more of His presence. Uh, just, it's just a, 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 a different way to relate to God by speaking and praying in other tongues. And by the way, we're going to talk a lot about speaking in tongues and what it is, how it helps a believer. Um, how does it benefit you to say something if you don't know what you're saying? We're going to talk about that. And did Jesus speak in tongues? We're going to deal with that too. So you don't want to miss these, um, these programs. We're going to cover all that before we're done here. Um, I want you to go to Acts chapter 19 now, and we'll look at an ex this experience in the life of the Apostle Paul. And we know that Paul spoke in tongues. He taught a lot about it in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. But uh, I want to let's go back to where he was converted and and how he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm sorry, I said Acts 19. It's actually Acts 9. Acts chapter 9 is is Paul's experience. And Paul was Saul of Tarsus. He was going to Damascus to persecute Christians. What a mission. And he saw a light and it knocked him off his horse. He fell on the ground. He was blinded. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And uh, Jesus spoke to him out of that light and said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. Not everybody's saved like this, but let me assure you, he got the same salvation you and I have. There is no different salvation. Whether you're gloriously saved or quietly saved, salvation is always the same. So Saul was converted at this moment. He confessed Jesus as his Lord. So he was then a Christian. Um, in verse, um, let, let's just read through this real quick. This is Acts 9. He was still breathing out threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and said, I want to go persecute Christians in Damascus. Verse 3, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven and he fell on the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, 
whom you're persecuting. So Jesus, uh, so Paul in verse 6, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. So, so Paul, Saul went and did what, he, what the Lord told him to do. And in the process of time, the Lord spoke to a man named Ananias and said, Ananias, you need to go pray for a man named Saul. And Ananias said, I've heard of this man. He's dangerous. And, uh, and, and so um, let me give, give you the reply. He, Ananias in verse 13 said, I've heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. <laughs> Isn't that cool? You know, Jesus spoke to Ananias and said, go pray for Saul. And Ananias is saying, Lord, maybe you don't understand, but this is a mean person. He's dangerous. So I don't think I should go over there. And the Lord didn't kill him. <laughs> you know, you'd think if the Lord was the way some people was, he wouldn't take any back talk. And Ananias really wasn't back talking. He was just saying, uh, are you sure? Am I hearing this right? Because he, he kills people that believe in your name. And, uh, and the Lord said, go for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. I will show him how many things he must suffer for my namesake. So uh, this is a divine move of God, an encounter with, with Saul and Ananias. And so this is the part we want to get to in verse 17. Ananias went his way, entered the house, and laying his hands on him said, Brother Saul. So, so he's calling him brother. Ananias must have ascertained from the Lord that Saul got saved, that he was no longer a sinner, that he was a brother, that he was born again. That happened evidently on the road when he said with his mouth, Lord, what do you want me to do? He confessed Jesus as Lord and he was saved. Now he was still blind and he was still didn't know, you know, didn't know a lot of the truths that he was going to learn, but he he did get saved and and he did go and wait. And, and Ananias was the answer to his prayer. Ananias entered the house, laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose, and he was baptized. So he got baptized with the Holy Spirit. He got saved, baptized with the Holy Spirit, and then baptized in water. He got <clears throat> all of that happened very um, in a very short time. But you can be baptized in water last, but you can't be be filled with the Holy Spirit before you get saved. You have to be a Christian. You have to be born again in order to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you can see here, once again, we see these, these principles laid out in God's Word. Saul became Brother Saul, and then hands were laid on him. And another thing that you see here is this is a, a, a disciple, Ananias. He was not an apostle. He didn't walk with Jesus with the other 11 uh, apostles. He was a disciple. He was a believer, and yet God used him to lay hands on Saul and, and get him filled with the Holy Spirit. We practice this. It's practiced all over the world where people want to receive the Holy Spirit, and we lay hands on them to receive the Holy Spirit. So it's not proper to say, well, only the apostles could do that, because, you know, we'll, we'll see it in Acts chapter 8 where where Peter and John went to uh, Samaria and prayed for Philip's converts to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They laid hands on them. And so people have taken that to say, unless you're an apostle, you can't do that. Well, Ananias was an, an apostle, and he laid hands on Saul, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So we still practice that today. The point we're making today, the main point is, to be filled with the Spirit or receive that gift 
you have to be a believer. You have to be a Christian. And uh, we have some other instances in Scripture to visit. But when I, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit as a teenager, it was a great service. And I mean, the Holy Spirit fell. Uh, there was 80 of us that went forward at a full gospel businesses meeting. It was July 4th, 1979. It changed my life forever. Uh, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was just consumed with God. I couldn't think of anything else but God. I actually got baptized later on that week in a swimming pool by a minister there. So I had the same experience as Saul in that regard. I was saved and then I was spirit filled and then I got water baptized. And so, uh, um, but we were in this youth setting uh, one night after I had been filled with the Spirit, the, the leader said, uh, there are other people here this night that want to be Spirit-filled and you're free to pray for one another. And so there was a girl that I, that I talked to and she wanted to be Spirit-filled. And I said, it's so easy. I mean, I just did this a couple nights ago. All you got to do is ask God, just lift your hands and ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I laid hands on her, nothing happened. And uh, I said, well, let's just try it again. It's, it's not hard. It's so easy to do. Just, just ask God, lift your hands. And, and I prayed for her and nothing happened. So I thought, well, I'm going to go find a leader and because I'm all new at this. So I took this girl and we found a, a youth leader. And I said, she wants to be spirit-filled. I got spirit-filled and I can't seem to get her. I can't do a thing for her. And he looked at her and he said, are you saved? And she said, no. He said, well, let's just pray a prayer for salvation. And they prayed that salvation prayer. She accepted Jesus as her Lord. And then he immediately prayed that she'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. She lifted her hands and started speaking in tongues right then and there. Well, that was early on. I was 15 years old and I never, ever forgot that experience. I will never pray for somebody to be filled with the Holy Spirit without first praying a salvation prayer. It, these spiritual principles are more sure than natural principles, and you can't get the cart before the horse. So now it's been many, many years later, and I've prayed for many, many people to be filled with the Spirit, and I always make sure they're born again, even if they they didn't come for salvation, but they came to be filled with the Spirit. We will pray a salvation prayer before we pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and I've seen people get saved and filled in an instant. I mean, it's so quick, it's like the same experience, but it's not. They have to be saved first, and they have to be filled, then they can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, secondly. And so that... Uh, that pattern is also seen throughout Scripture. Well, we read what Peter said. Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord and what? You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So he had it in that same order. We saw what happened to Saul. He was obviously saved on the road when he fell off his horse and confessed Jesus as Lord because Ananias said, brother Saul and laid hands on him, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. We know this happened in Acts chapter 8. In fact, I, I quoted it, but let's just go there. Acts chapter 8, and this is a, a great revival that Philip had. And uh, in verse 5, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them, and the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And uh, there was great joy in that city. So he had a lot of people get saved. And in the process of time, uh, they called Peter and John, Philip did, to come down. Uh, verse 14, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John. So, so how do you get saved? Well, you receive the Word of God. You're born again by the incorruptible seed of God's Word. So these people in Samaria saw miracles. They heard P Philip preach the gospel. They received the Word of God. Then they sent for, or, or P uh, Peter and John were sent uh, to them. Peter and John got there much like uh, I've done this many times. You go into a situation and you realize, wow, these are believers all right, but they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. So you go about getting them spirit filled. And I've done many, many meetings like that. 
Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout.